All right, astronomy lesson 2.3, constellations. So the last lesson we learned how to identify some useful tools for some constellations. Now let's learn about some constellations. So, constellation facts. Get out of here. Yep. Uh, a constellation is going to be a group of stars that make some familiar pattern. Uh, our constellations have been set for many, many years, and they are at different distances to the Earth. So although they look like they're on a flat plane, they are actually separated into different distances. Now, constellations are kind of like uh, states or countries on a map. They help break up the night sky. So every constellation is a different part of that, not, of that night sky. Uh, there are also other familiar patterns that you can find inside of these constellations or nearby, but the official constellation name is like the official country or state, and then the other smaller parts, we'll talk about those here in a little bit. So, most of these constellations are Greek, uh, or at least have Greek legends in them, um, but not all. Some are more modern, like telescopium and microscopium and sexton. Uh, but many are Greek, like Perseus, Pisces. Uh, you get the idea. Uh, and many are based on this mythological figures, and they have these great stories about how Perseus cut off Medusa's head, and um, she's, he's holding the head in this night sky, and the, the eye blinks, and all kinds of you know stuff like that. Well, really, it's just these stars, and this is a pattern that we came up with um, a long time ago. Now, those stories, you know, I'm sure you can take a mythology course and learn all about the stories and, you know, why they came up with this. But, you know, when you break it really down to, they, you know, they didn't have uh, much to do at night, at least not that I'm aware of. They didn't have a lot of light outside, um, so they couldn't, you know, go to their friend's house and play Xbox, things like that. So they sat around, looked at the stars, and made up stories that like went with them. Most cultures have some kind of stories that are associated with the stars. Now, the visible constellations that we see do vary because the Earth is revolving around the sun, so we are seeing different parts of that night sky. Um, so things like Orion is considered a winter constellation, and Cygnus um, is considered a summer constellation, which means that season-wise in the northern hemisphere, this is what you're going to be able to see. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're not there, it's just they're, they rise during the day, and the sun's out during the day, so you can't see them. Uh, if you were fortunate enough to see the solar eclipse somewhere where it wasn't cloudy, um, this, re this recent uh, one that went across the U.S., uh, you looked up, then you would see the constellations uh, that are going to be our winter constellations now. You just saw them in the summer, so that would have been pretty cool. I was not fortunate enough to travel for that, so I didn't get to see them. But if you did, good for you. Uh, and basically, it kind of looks like this. Constellations are on opposite sides of the sun, so the Earth is rotating and revolving. So the constellations that we see over here, while we're having nighttime, we can't see when we're right here. And so on and so forth. So as we go around our orbit in the sun, we are being exposed to those different parts. So we're seeing them at different times. Uh, the zodiac. One of the biggest questions I get is about astrology and astronomy. So astrology, hey, you know, more power to you. You want to predict... Uh, you know, what's going to happen when you're going to meet a tall, dark, handsome stranger? Go for it. Um, this is an astronomy course, so I mostly focus on the science behind it. Um, that being said, they do share some connections. So, zodiac uh, is a matter of signs, and these horoscope signs, you can't see me, but I'm doing the quotation marks uh, with my fingers. Uh, anyways, they are... Um, really in, in science. So these are stars that are kind of within this 18 degrees of uh, the ecliptic, so the path of the sun travels. Um, and given the month, there is a different one uh, every month that is directly on that path. 
Um, technically, there's 13 constellations um, that are part of the zodiac, but we only ever talk about 12 because there's 12 months, so everyone is born on one of these months. But there is actual, like, based on what we developed for the zodiac, there is a 13th, and it's actually the biggest one, too. It's Ophiuchus, so it's pretty sweet. Uh, might be a question someday on some test. You might want to know that. Or, you know, impress your friends. Be like, I know the 13th Zodiac sign. They'd be like, is that a scary movie? Anyways. That being said, not everything that you see in the night sky is a constellation. Some of them are what we know as asterisms. Asterisms are kind of like a small, recognizable pattern that you can find. Sometimes they're in a constellation, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're made up of money constellations, but it's not part of the official constellation. So the Big Dipper is not a constellation. It's part of a constellation um, known as Ursa Major. So Orion's belt, shown here, is three stars that make up um, the belt of Orion. Uh, the Big Dipper is part of Ursa Major, the great square in Pegasus. And you kind of get the idea. So these are patterns that you can find. You can find all kinds of patterns. Three dots make a triangle. You can find triangles all over the place. But generally, they're not considered constellations. Uh, they can also be part, like I said before, of bigger constellations. So many constellations coming together, like the winter hexagon or the summer triangle. These come together and they form a pattern that you can see, a very large pattern that you can see in the sky. And these are considered asterisms. 